Hello students, this is your Dandabani. We are going to see about uh, alloys in this video. In the engineering chemistry, uh, the alloys comes under the unit of 3 named alloys and phase rule. From this unit, we can able to know about what is alloys and how the composition of alloys and its application has been studied using the phase rule and phase diagram. The prerequisite required to study the alloys 12th standard chemistry is more enough in that particularly metallurgy unit is uh, giving a uh, impact knowledge to learn about alloys the objectives we acquired uh, the knowledge we acquire after the session is we can able to describe what is metals and alloys and we can able to explain the need of alloys and finally the alloying compound uh, elements and their roles and effects in alloying process how they are modifying the properties so this is the thing we are going to see the upcoming minutes the introduction of alloys definition significance of alloying function and functions and effects of alloying elements first we start with metals yes of course uh, instead of learning uh, alloys first we know about what are metals then only we can able to know alloys so the metal is nothing but it is a hard material which can extracted from the naturally occurring ores for example the first image states aluminium the aluminium has been extracted from their ore bauxite as well as the next one iron which can be extracted from its ore hamite like this each metals have been extracted from their ores and also these metals having certain physical properties uh, the malleability ductility luster and they are having the thermal and electrical conductivity very good uh, conductivity properties and having melting and boiling points such a high and corrosive and chemical activity also given by these types of metals the first one malleability is nothing but for example in the above image you can see able to see the gold metal if we hammer these metals uh, continuously we can make it as a sheet in this picture you can able to see the malleability property so the metal having such types of property next one ductility now it's nothing but the elongation of metal we can able to make it like a wire or thread so the elongation of metals is happening no it is called as ductility so these are the various types of uh, physical properties which has been expressed by the metals and we are now we are going to see about alloy the definition of alloy is nothing but usually the metal cannot be dissolved in the ordinary solvents the metal is not get dissolved in ordinary solvents but the metal can get dissolved with another metal in the molten state so this makes the topic alloy it is a homogeneous solid solution of two or more different elements one of which at least a metal is called an alloy this homogeneous solid solution is occurred through heating the two or three or a more number of metals and non-metal composition to a higher temperature so that the molten state will acquire the metals get combinated and it is known as alloy so it, the second line which state that which at least a metal is uh, has to be present in the alloy then only it is called as alloy so the alloy consists of not only metals also by metals and non-metals but at least a metal should be present then only it is called as alloys so the already stated this so the metals are insoluble in common solvents but can be dissolved in another metal in a molten state during the process of cooling we can acquire alloy and amalgams in examination point of view we can uh, take it as a two more question define amalgam means nothing but an alloy consists of a mercury as its constituent element then it is known as amalgam for example if you are having three or two four metals combinated to form an alloy means if that alloy having a mercury nodes then it is called as amalgam if the sodium uh, metal having a mercury as a constituent alloy means it is called as sodium amalgam as well as if the potassium having uh, these types of things so it's called as potassium amalgam whatever the metals we are having the constituent element as mercury then it is called as amalgams the properties of alloys and we study the earlier slide the properties of metals but now we are studying the properties of alloys it's nothing but harder and malleable usually the metals are soft we can take it as alkali metals or alkaline earth metals usually they are soft by making it as an alloy we can modify the property by hard 
so the alloy become harder than metal and it's become more malleable and having lower melting points usually the metals having a higher melting points now the property get changed so that the alloy having lower melting points and also having lower electrical conductivity and having higher resistance against the corrosion and action against the acids so we are moving to the first big question uh, in my examination point of view the significance and the purpose of alloying why we need alloys so in seven points we can able to uh, tell that these are the things which induce us to uh, make alloy the first point is to increase the hardness of metal i already state usually the metals are soft so it can be made harder by alloying process and the three example has been quoted below first one the gold metal is usually soft if you make jewel with say very simple gold it will become brittle it can break easily so that uh, the metal has been made into alloy by the percentage composition of copper when added to gold then the property has been changed to harder so the jewels has been made means now the uh, ornaments are did not get broken so the gold property soft has been become now as harder second if you add 0.5 percentage of arsenic to lead it attains more hardness so that we can the bullets has been made by these types of alloys only and third example if we add 2 percentage of carbon to iron it improves the hardness and they can fight against corrosion also so this is called as stainless steel so likewise we can able to increase the hardness of the metal by the process of alloying and now we are moving out to the second point to lower the melting point of the metal in the property of alloy we studied that so usually the metals are having higher boiling po melting point but when we change into alloy the melting point gets lowered so alloying process lowers down the melting point of pure metal and becomes more fusible so that we can able to melt the metal more easily we can uh, the gfl states that in a more electrical shop we can see that the soldering process which has been made use that single alloy component which is known as wood's metal an alloy used for soldering which can melt at 70 degree celsius the wood's metal comprised of lead bismuth tin and cadmium it have much less melt less melting point than its constituent metals such as lead bismuth tin and cadmium and compared to their melting points the alloy is much lesser having a melting point 70 degree celsius only so that we can easily make it fusible and the metal has been used for various electronic processes third one to resist the corrosion of the metal metals are highly reactive and corrosive therefore lifetime is reduced if a metal is converted into alloy it's uh, having a higher resistance over the corrosion process so that it can be used uh, more and more years so the corrosion did not occur and we can see uh, from this uh, the iron it is more easily rusted in the process natural process due to the moisture surrounding it by this metal and usually if the rain uh, rainfall is occur the iron gets easily rusted why because uh, the highly reactivity of the metal so the alloying process now can be changed into the useful application the pure iron gets easily rusted uh, from earlier image but its alloy stainless steel resists corrosion so that the stainless steel does not gets uh, corroded more easily than iron so we can use it for more applications and uh, uh, constructive purposes and the fourth point of uh, significance of alloy to modify the chemical activity of metal just we are seeing uh, stating that why we need alloys because metals having certain properties alloys having certain properties but by making alloy we are modifying the property we are modifying the physical property chemical property uh, and mechanical applications so that we can use it for more purposes so the chemical activity of the metal is also altered by alloying process for example this is sodium metal and this is sodium amalgam the word amalgam which states that this sodium alloy having a constituent element as mercury so that we are called as sodium amalgam so if the sodium metal has been changed into its alloy uh, it having a less active than its sodium metal if reversibly we can see that aluminum amalgam so the aluminum amalgam is more active than aluminum so this alloy process will modify the chemical activity either more activity or either lesser activity so in what which purpose we need the activity means we can able to modify it as alloys 
then fifth to modify the color of the metal the color of the metals are improved by the alloying process for example we see the two metals the copper which is uh, red in color usually and the zinc is silver white in color but when we compress the two metals into a single alloy the color has been changed it's, it shows the yellow color so usually the metals having a different colors when it gets changed into alloy the color has been modified and improved so that we can use the we, can, we are in the need of alloying process the sixth point to obtain good casting of metal pure metals cannot be used for casting because we know that usually the metals are soft and they are brittle so we cannot be able to use in the uh, casting process but alloys are more hard and fusible and have better castability so that the casting um, uh, for the casting purposes we can use alloys instead of metals from this we can able to make more hard casting materials uh, usually these things are uh, happening over in the printing uh, things when 5 percentage of tin and 3 percentage of antimony are added to lead show good casting property the casting printing types has been made through these types of alloys and seventh one to increase tensile strength the tensile strength of pure iron can be increased by adding the one percentage of carbon to iron so that the tensile property has been increased and the metal or the alloy has been expanded during certain conditions so we can improve the tensile strength of the metals by the alloying processes so these are the seven things which makes us to go to the manufacturing of alloy by using the metals and here we are going to see the third content the functions and effects of alloying elements for example here we are taking the plain carbon steel uh, and it have a limited uses only so in that steel if we are going to add some alloying elements like nickel chromium manganese molybdenum cobalt and uh, vanadium so these metals alloying metals which modify the properties and because of that property we can able to modify uh, manufacture different types of materials application oriented materials so that the element uh, playing a major role in the function and effects of alloying process such steels are called as alloy steels or special steels so now we are going to add the nickel to carbon steel and then we are going to add chromium to the carbon steel and then we are going to add manganese molybdenum cobalt like that so in each element they are having a different property improvement so that we can able to manufacturing different things first one the nickel has been added to plain carbon steel the property which get enhanced are ductility tensile strength toughness elasticity and corrosion resistance because of this uh, alloying element we can able to made the balancing wheels the manufacture we can able to manufacture the balancing wheels so that alloy present in that uh, balancing wheel which consists the alloying element nickel second we are going to add chromium in the plain carbon steel which enhances the tensile strength and it has some more corrosion resistance and the hardness and toughness also get increased so that the cutlery and surgical instruments are manufactured through this alloying element process so if you are going to the hospital if we can see the scissors or any surgical instruments we can remain that uh, surely this alloying metal having a chromium as one of its component so that only it has a more corrosion resistant property a third one we are going to add manganese on the plain carbon steel so that the manganese increase the strength of the steel and toughness and also plus brittleness so the grinding wheels and the steering spindles in the cars these things are manufactured by the uh, alloying element of manganese to the carbon steel next we are going to see about the action of molybdenum in the alloying process so the molybdenum improves the corrosion as well as abrasion resistance so that abrasion resistance is having much higher in that steel means we can able to manufacture these types of high speed tools like the grinding tools and the uh, machinery saws so these plates and these uh, screws are made at using the alloying element of molybdenum so the, when we saw these types of things we have to remain that so these metals or these alloying components having one of the metal as molybdenum fifth one tungsten usually in the alloying process the tungsten having some magnetic retentivity so it 
the property has been increased and the cutting hardness and the abrasion properties also increased so such like cutting tools and magnets have a uh, alloying element of tungsten inside in it so that the magnetic retentivity is resembled in that particular alloying material as well as the cutting hardness materials next sixth one vanadium so the vanadium usually increases the tensile strength and shock resistance so that we can able to manufacture axles crank pins and piston rods so in the plain carbon steel uh, we are adding a more number of alloying elements each element improves certain properties of that alloys so that we can able to manufacture different types of materials which has been used in different types of applications so these alloying process and the alloying elements uh, plays a major role in modification of their properties and their applications so now i am going to conclude my session uh from this i want to state the summary of the video lecture so in the first thing we are studied about what are metals usually the metals are soft and they are having certain properties and what are alloys the composition of two or more metals in a molten state which gives a homogeneous solid during the cooling process is known as alloys so the alloys are having definite properties when compared to the metals if the metal is hard means after it gets alloyed the alloy have become harder so like this the properties of the metals has been modified through the process of alloying and then we see a question about significance of alloying in that we have stated the six points why we are need of need the need of alloys by increasing the corrosion resistance by modify the chemical activity we can modify the chemical activity as well as we can change the color of the metals we can uh, uh, improve the hardness of the metal like that we studied in the significance of alloying process and finally we studied the function and the effects of alloying elements like chromium manganese molybdenum vanadium how these alloying elements are modify their functions of the uh, alloying steels and how we can uh, manufacturing different types of materials through these alloying elements we studied in the things so in this uh, video lecture i hope that you can able to know about the metals alloys and their properties how they are getting vary um, varying and the things of uh, purpose of alloying why we are in need to uh, make alloy and the functions and uh, effects of the alloying elements through the alloying process so how that this video will be useful for the uh, topic alloys and you can acquire some knowledge over the process of alloying and the applications and their significance by this i am thanking you for your patient listening i am very thank you so much for you all thank you so much